Guys, what's going on? I hope you guys are well. I hope you guys are staying safe. So guys, uh, Amir Khan v Kelbrook is starting to build momentum now. A lot of people seem to be against this fight. Some people seem to not care. Makai mentioned it in the live stream. By the way, sorry about the live stream. The, the, I don't know what happened. My Wi-Fi or something just went off. And the whole stream just shut down. Um, I don't know what it was. I think the internet was dodgy. Uh, so I apologize for that. Um, but yeah, uh, let's get to this video. So yeah, um, it seems that Amir Khan and Kel Brook is starting to get, build some momentum. And it does look like this fight is definitely going to happen. And I think it will happen towards the end of this year. Uh, which is obviously, for British fight fans, is obviously, I don't know, it's a bit bittersweet in the sense that, okay, we'll finally get the fight. Uh, and I do think there'll be a lot of people interested in, in this fight. Um, but there's also a lot of people that are angry and there's a lot of people that probably won't tune in, that will probably have tuned in uh, if they are both, both fought in their primes. Um, which is sad, really, because I do think it would have been one of the biggest fights in British boxing history. Uh, I think it would have sold out Wembley and I think it would have probably done over a million pay-per-view buys. And unfortunately now, we're not going to get that. We're not going to get that kind of... The fight's not going to get that kind of clout, uh, which is sad uh, because it d d this kind of fight deserved that kind of clout. And I think it's a bit like Mayweather Pacquiao, where it's five years too late. And I think Jamie Moore mentioned that in an interview that I saw that people will still watch it and it'll still be a good fight. But obviously it's not what it was. It's a bit like Mayweather Pacquiao. The difference is the Mayweather Pacquiao fight, those two were still championship level fighters, whereas these two have kind of got to the point where they're not even relevant at world level. So I think the winner of this fight will still carry on. I think the loser is retired. Um, and who knows, if it's a great fight, if it's a really good fight and it's up and down, we may even get a rematch. Because people may be interested if, if it's a great fight. They may do it again. They may, if you know, depending on how the fight plays out, it may even do a rematch and make more money. Uh, I, I think, you know, we'll finally get this fight done and dusted. And at least it's not like Calzaghe, you know, Frotch, that didn't happen. At least it's not like Junior Witt or Ricky Hatton, that never happened. At least it's one of those fights that we will, have, will say in history, although it was two guys past their best, that it happened. Do you understand? So it's not going to go down like the Kawasaki Froch or the, or the you know, Junior Witter Hatton, that fights that just didn't come to fruition. This looks like this fight's going to come to fruition, which is great news, in my opinion, because at the end of the day, you know, history will have these two fights. And even though they fight fought past their best, it's irrelevant. They'll still, have, they'll still fight. So I think I'd rather, I rather see it than not see it, to be honest. And I think I'll be hyped. I think we'll all be hyped and I think a lot of people that are, are slamming the fight now will, will be tuning in. Now, the question is, what what channel is this fight going to land on? Where is this fight going to... Where is this fight going to be aired? Where is this fight going to end up on? Uh, for me, personally, I think if I, had to, if I had to take a pick, I would probably say Sky Sports. And here's why I think it'll be Sky Sports. I think Sky Sports, Adam Smith has always wanted this fight really badly. Obviously, the fight's not what it was, but I think it's a fight that they wanted very, very badly and a fight that Adam Smith has pushed for for many years. So I think, they'd do, I think they'll be doing a lot to make sure that fight's on their platform. The zone, I don't think they'll be willing to put up that much money because I don't think they'll get a lot back unless they have a strong undercard. However, for the fight fans, I think it would be better for it to be on the zone because it'll be within your subscription. The problem is, is that I'm not sure the zone will be willing to fork out the kind of money that both these guys would want. And I think Sky would because I think Sky know they, they would be getting a return on their money that they pay both fighters or the guarantees that they pay both fighters. I think they know they'll be getting a huge return because I do think this fight will do in the region of... 350 to 500,000 and maybe I'm being a bit optimistic I still think that this fight is going to be big now Kel Brook said something he said that this fight is the biggest fight outside of AJ and Fury now there are a couple of heavyweight fights that I think I think including I think any fight that's including Joshua and Fury between another Brit could pop, will probably be bigger but I mean outside the heavyweight division I can't think of two Brits fighting where it could generate a little real interest and a, a real intrigue I don't think so. And I think I think Kel's right. I do think outside of Joshua Fury, I think it's still the biggest fight. Uh, I don't disagree with that. What can you can you think of another fight that's bigger between two Brits? I can't. 
you know, Warrington, like some of the featherweights, but let's be honest, featherweights don't get that kind of clout. Um, what other fight? Eubank Saunders? Like, I don't think that's anywhere near as big, to be honest. Uh, so, yeah, I still think that Kell Brook v. Amir Khan is still massive. Um, I don't think, I can't really think of any fight on the top of my head that would do bigger numbers that would have the same kind of clout as this fight, apart from AJ Fury. I, d I don't think there'll be, I think from what I've, from what I've seen online, there still are a lot of people that want to see the fight. There still are a lot of people that want to see it. There's a lot of people that are against it. And there's a lot of people that think that this fight is, oh, it's, it's past it, sell by it. I think if you if you try to get over the fact that okay it's not too it's not what it was but it's still a good fight and it's still worth watching there's many fights a lot worse than this that you watch you know and most importantly I've said this before and I'll say this again boxing and sport in general is about entertainment if something's going to entertain me I'm going to watch. I'm going to buy this fight regardless because for me it's about entertainment for me it's about it's about enjoying, getting that, getting that, you know, butterflies. And Amir Khan events for me, obviously, you know, I've got in the sport because watching him, you know, initially. So to be to be fair, I'm always going to watch his fights regardless, you know, whether he's fighting Billy Dib or whether he's fighting whoever. I'm always going to watch his fights. And against Kell Brook, when you're a British fan and you know what this fight means, uh, whether you're a Khan fan or a Brook fan, you know what this fight means if you're living in Britain. You know what this means. This is bragging rights. You know, even though it's not what the and I and I don't think either guy has that kind of, you know that you know that that bite that they had prior. You know when they, when Brooke was champion and Khan was a world level fighter. I don't think it still has. It doesn't have that. They don't have that bite probably because they know where they are and what stage of their career. And even I saw an interview with Dominic Ingle. Now he was he was also not you know like normally he's always having a dig at Khan and even he wasn't. Uh, probably because of the fact that he knows the fight isn't what it was. So it, it's just a fight where they'll fight and, you know, it, it's not really the legacy fight that it would have been five, six years ago where a lot of people would have been, like the Dominic Ingle would have been like, you know, he would want Brook to win and, and Khan's camp would want Khan. But I don't think it has that same kind of appeal. Uh, I think the edge of the fight is kind of gone. Uh, now, if, when, if the fight was to get made and they both get to press conference, who knows, the, the atmosphere might change. You know, and I do think Ame Khan's also hired Bo Mac McIntyre for that specific reason that I believe he knows that this fight, you know, Dominic Ingalls is going to probably be there chirping off. And Ame has probably got with Bo Mac McIntyre because Bo Mac, as we know, is somebody that he can talk, he can talk smack as well. So I think um, it, otherwise it would have been probably Dom Ingle continue having it. Whereas I think it, Having Bomak there, I think Bomak will do a lot of talking. Um, and I, I do think that Amir should have Bomak at the press conference, to be honest with you. Uh, because I think that will be important. Because the chances are, Bomak is obviously from Omaha. Um, it will be good if Bomak can come over for the press conference. Especially if he's his trainer. Because if Amir is going to be training in the UK, or is he going to be training in the US, he's probably going to have to fly Bomak over. So, you know, I, I, do, I, I do think there's a very strong possibility that... Uh, Bo, Bo Mac, uh, will be at the press conference hopefully and it will be a very if that is the case it will be a very very entertaining press conference because one thing we know is that Dominic Ingle is not short of a few words and Bomac is definitely not short of a few words so I think by the time the event gets around to fight week I think the f event will be hyped up so much that I think the interest and the people that will buy it, I also think Sky will also put on a good undercard the only problem is now is that a lot of the a lot of the Sky haven't got a lot of fighters, so who are they going to put on the undercard? And that's going to be what may be a problem. And that's something that Eddie would be able to stack the undercard. The that's the I think that that would be something that being on the zone. I think this fight would get. I don't know actually. I don't know actually because I I do think that maybe on pay per view they may be able to make more money. The only thing is, are, are Sky going to be able to have a good enough undercard? Do you see what I mean? Are they gonna, who who can they get? Are there fighters that they could potentially get on the undercard? Who who you know who will be potentially fighting now? There may be certain fighters that on the zone that may get permission from Eddie Hearn to fight on that. I, I, Eddie Hearn isn't the type of guy to stop his fighters fighting on another card if it makes sense for them. Do you see what I mean? So uh, I'm pretty sure like something like Anthony Fowler, Liam um, Smith, for example, I think. 
could have been good on an undercard like Khan Brook, especially on pay-per-view on Sky, I think that kind of fight would have probably been good on pay-per-view. Now, I know they've done that as their own event, uh, but, you know, undercard fights like that, I think they're going to need fights of that magnitude to have on the undercard to make it a good £20 pay-per-view because a lot of people w won't think it's worth it. So, for me, I think they're going to have to have a strong undercard. I think they're going to have to get have some good... Maybe championship level fights or, or good two good fighters, in my opinion, at least two good fights where it's it's good level. Two guys that we know about, know of. Uh, so two fights that you know and fighters involved that we know of. I think they're gonna have to stack the undercard to make it a worthwhile show. Um, hopefully, it's a strong undercard as well because I, I do think when a lot of people buy event now, unless it's like AJ Fury, which is obviously we're only gonna be buying it for the particular. Um, event itself we're going to be for the main event uh, for something like Calm Brook which is kind of slightly past its best I think people would want to, if they want to buy it they're going to buy it for a good night of boxing not just the main event because the main event's not as big as it was obviously in their primes people would have just bought it just because of the main event but at this stage in their career I think you need a good undercard and you need a good you know supporting fight uh, just to make the pay-per-view make sense so I think people will tune in regardless because I think there's still that intrigue there on who would win between Amir and, and Kel Brook. So I think it's great. I think it's great. And I, I, if I'm honest with you, I'm looking forward to it. I'm actually quite excited, to be honest with you. I am actually very excited that this fight's ha happening. And Some people seem to think if the fight happens at 147, Amir Khan will destroy Kel Brook. And some people think if it happens at 154, Kel would be a favourite and he'd beat Khan. And if it happens at 150, it makes the fight fair and, you know, you don't know who's going to win. Um, will the fight happen at catchweight? I don't know. To be honest, at this point, I don't care. I don't care who the A side is. I don't care who gets the biggest split. Back in the day in their primes, I cared because obviously I, I was a supporter of Amir Khan and I felt he deserved the lion's share. He was the biggest star, the bigger name. But at this point, I couldn't care less. I, you know, I just let them do that. And I'm not, to be honest, I'm not I care less about all of that negotiation. At this point, I just want to see the fight. I couldn't care less about, you know, who's the biggest star, who's the thing. I, I think we know that Amir Khan is the one that's going to probably be calling the shots. And he's probably going to be the one that's maybe, you know, putting this fight out there to different broadcasters. and Or not him, but his team are probably going to be doing the legwork. And then I think they'll probably offer Kel Brook the fight. And it's up to Kel Brook to probably accept. I, I, Kel will accept at this point, you know, because it will be a big payday for him. Um, and yeah, I, I think the fight happens. I think the fight happens. Um, I mean, I'm, I'm excited, guys. I, I'm not. Here's the thing, right? I get the fight would have been bigger years ago, but who cares? At the end of the day, it didn't happen. You know, Junior Witter and, Cal, and Ricky Hatton never happened. Calzaghi Frosch never happened. You know, so at least we're going to get it. You know, there's certain fights in British boxing that never fought. Ricky Hatton never fought Junior Witter. You know, Calzaghi never fought Froch. We're going to get Khan v. Brook. This is going to happen. So the fact, that, the fact of the matter is, is that we should, we should just forget about the past because the past is the past. You can't change that. You can't go back in a time machine and get these guys back in 2015 to fight one another. You can't do that. So you just got to take what you get. You got to take what you, what's coming. And the fact that these two are fighting for me is better than if they don't fight and they, and they don't have this fight. At least it will finally say, I know people will say, well, it was past its best. Yes. But at least we can say that, okay, the fight's happened and we, it happened. You know, and, that, and that's the main thing. Like, I don't really care if, you know, when it's happening, it's happened. And we, we get to see a good night of boxing. You know, at the end of the day, who cares if there's no championship belts? We don't leave with the belts. We just we just get the thrill of watching great boxing. You know, we don't leave with the belts. We don't leave with, you know, they, they do. So at the end of the day, if they're willing to fight, with, you know, when they're not relevant at world level, and it, it is what it is. I'm, I'll enjoy it. I like watching boxing. I bought Mayweather v. Logan Paul, right? I bought it. So if I can buy that, then I'm going to buy my name, Amir Khan v. Kell Brook, you know. And I don't think both guys are that, that, you know, I think, Kel, I think here's the thing. I think Kell Brook is, is, is damaged in the sense that I think he's got real problems, you know. And we saw that in the Crawford fight because he was actually doing quite well up until he got stopped, you know. And he got stop, stopped bizarrely, really, I must say. You know, I, I wouldn't expect Kell Brook in his prime to get stopped like that. 
Um, and at this point, someone actually mentioned it in the live stream that Kel may even have weaker resistance than Khan at this point, you know, uh, going off his last fight. Also, what I noticed with Kel Brook is the fact that I think Kel Brook was very gun shy. You know, and uh, that's not something that I'm used to seeing with Kel Brook. Um, is that down to the vulnerability, the damage that, I, again, you don't know because like I said, both fighters are quite worn down. To me, it's a lottery in terms of who wins. I think it's a lottery. Uh, I don't think you could say either way who wins this fight. It's a lottery. Um, I think no one could say for sure that he's going to win or he's going to win. I, I, think it's, I think it's a lottery, if I'm honest with you. I, I wouldn't sit here, even as a Khan fan, say, I would favour Khan just because of the fact that I think I think he's still going to throw punches. And I think if he lands one right, uh, Kel might be in the same position he was against Crawford. But again, if Kel lands one on, on him, you know, it may be game over. Because again, we, how far is Ame Khan past his best? Has Ame Khan got, is his legs, like when we saw him against Crawford, his legs look really shaky. You know, against Vargas, his leg looked really shaky. Is he going to be the same against Kel Brook? I, I don't know, you know, I, I don't know. And what's Kel got left if he gets here? It, there's too many, there's too many uh, variables, like, you know, there's there's too mu too many variables for me uh, that could influence the outcome of this fight. Um, I do like the fact that Amir Khan's joined Bomak and, and Crawford just because of the fact, not because they're not going to change Amir at this stage. Not You know, you, you're not going to change at the age of where he's at and how much experience he's got, you know, he's got his fighting style. What, what I feel is... Good with the move is the fact that I think when you're fighting or when you're seeing the best pound for pound fighter in the world and you're seeing what he's doing, uh, it motivates you because you want to get back to that level. You feel like even though he, may, he won't be able to now, the fact of the matter is it motivates you. You know, someone like Crawford will be pushing you. You get to see some of the stuff that Crawford's doing, how he's training. You get to spar with Terence Crawford. Imagine Amir Khan sparring 12 weeks with Terence Crawford. You know, imagine that preparation, 16 weeks of preparation with Terence Crawford. You know, you, you can't buy that exploring. You know, but if, imagine when, if, I, I believe Amir is probably going to go over to America and go over to Omaha. Imagine, imagine having a camp sparring with Terence Crawford. Like, you, you can't get better sparring than that. And even Crawford can't get better sparring than Khan, really. You know, that's really high level sparring. You know, and I think it's a benefit to both guys. So personally, I think it's, I think it's a great, I think it's great for both, for both parties that they're, they're sparring one, one another. And I think for Amir, it's definitely great because he's in the gym with the best, one of the best pound for pound fighters in the world. I just don't, I just don't think that's not going to harm your chances, is it? And it basically shows, if, especially if he was to, you know, this fight was to get announced and he were to actually go over to Omaha to train with Crawford and, and Bomac. I think he would be showing that he really wants to win this fight and he'd be showing that uh, he's dead. He's dedicated. And who knows, if he was to beat Kel Brook, who knows, he might want to go and fight some other guys and may think under Bomak, if it works out well, he may be able to, who knows where it, this may lead to. I, I, a lot of people seem to think he's finished, but like I said, let's see. Let's see how he looks if he fights Kel Brook and let's see how Kel Brook looks. If Kel Brook wins, he may want to go on. I think the loser of this fight is definitely going to retire. I don't think there's anywhere for the loser to go. Uh, but the winner, who knows? He may have a couple of, he may have one fight, one or two more fights after that. So leave your thoughts. Let me know what you think, guys, in the comment section below. What do you guys think? And guys, remember to please like, share, subscribe to my channel. I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace.